Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to use the Raise tool in the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve 16.1.2. Inside your cut window in DaVinci Resolve, press Ctrl and I to insert the media files that you wish to use in this project. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. In this particular project, I am going to use a .png file, which contains colors for the letter C, and the background is transparent. To insert your media clip to the timeline, left click on the thumbnail inside your media pool for your media file. Go to left click on the append button below the master bin. A blue edit representing your media file should appear on your cut timeline. Going to the duration reader on the right hand side, with the red playhead at the end of the particular edit that I have just inserted, we can see that this particular edit lasts for 5 seconds in this video project. If I go back to my media pool master bin, and select the icon in the bottom right corner of my media file thumbnail, with a rectangle comprising of three dots in a horizontal line in the bottom right corner. Left click once to display the clip properties. This particular clip will play at a rate of 24 frames per second. The information about the number of stills that play per second and the entire edit duration are important for determining the speed and duration of the animation sequence that you are about to complete using this tutorial. With your media file edits on the timeline, go to select the Fusion tab at the bottom of your DaVinci Resolve interface. Left click once. Two nodes should appear inside your Fusion window in the bottom left corner of the screen. If you can't see these two boxes together, simply left click on the one that appears, which is called Media in 1. Left click, hold your mouse button down and drag this towards the other node, which appears towards the right and then left click on the window which appears in the top right corner of this panel to remove this to display Media In 1 and Media Out 1 on your interface. Ensure that Media In 1 is selected here. Press Shift and Space on your keyboard. In the Select Tool window which appears, go to find the tool called Raise, which you can search for manually by left clicking and dragging the scroll bar or by typing in Raise in the search box towards the bottom. Ensure that the Raise tool is selected and left click on Add. And you should now see a third node called Raise 1 appear on your nodes window in between Media In 1 and Media Out 1. My intention is to create a Raise animation sequence across the entire 5 second edit that I originally inserted into the cut timeline. Staying in my Fusion window now, I can see a timeline appear towards the top of the screen. At present, my red play line on the timeline is at frame number 120, which is the final frame in this whole edit. If I change this to the first frame number 0, by double left clicking and typing manually, press enter, we can see that the red play line has gone to the beginning of this particular timeline with the preview of the original media file appearing in the top left corner here and on the right side we can see an output with the raise effect added to this particular picture. If I left click on the raise node and go to inspector center X and Y determines where the rays are pointing at on the screen. At present, they are coming from the centre of the screen and stretch outwards. If these were to be manipulated by typing in new numbers into the X and Y boxes here, or by left clicking on the double red arrowhead which appears on the middle of the top right preview window with the ray effects shown, and dragging this to a different position, we can see that the direction that the rays point in is changed and the X and Y coordinates of the ray direction is manipulated inside the inspector window. 
Press Ctrl and Z to undo. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. To restore this to the default value, 0.5 for both X and Y. The blend setting determines the strength of the fade effect applied to the rays on your image or video file. If I reduce this to 0.5, for example, we can see that the ray lights that appear on screen appear weaker than they previously did with the setting of 1.0 for blend. For this particular tutorial, I'm going to stick with 1.0 as the blend value. Left click on the circle which appears underneath the black line of the inspector setting to restore its default value. Left click once. A low decay value above zero will ensure that the colors from the rays spread out across a greater area on your image file and there is less intense brightness coming from your image source. However, a greater decay value will see the brighter areas of your image becoming more visible on screen, but the ray effects will not spread as far on your particular image or video file. Merge over ensures that your original image appears alongside your rays. If you untick this, we can only see a very faint outline here of the actual channel logo, and what remains are the ray colors and lines. I will left click again to ensure that this image stays put. A threshold value in image editing basically enables light and dark regions of an image to be separated. Any pixel that contains a color value that exceeds the threshold value will be represented and shown as a light region on your image file. Anything below the threshold value will appear as a darker shade instead. The threshold value in this particular exercise will not make a significant difference to my logo image file that I've chosen. And so I'm going to keep this value as 0.8. And the exposure level refers to the amount of light per unit area on your image file. As you can see, I have increased the exposure level on this particular example here. And the brightness and color intensity on the original image are more significant. With my red play line at the start of the timeline inside my fusion window, we are going to make some changes to the values inside the inspector window for my rays one node. As my video plays, I want the intensity of the rays to increase up to the halfway point and then decrease towards the end of the video. At the start, I want the rays to point to the right. So I'm going to change center X to minus one. Double click inside the box and type in the number that you wish. Press enter. In order to apply an animation effect, we need to set up points on the timeline for our video or image file here using keyframes, which will comprise of different properties for the rays settings. In this example here, I'm going to left click on the diamond icon at the top next to center X and Y. This should now become red to indicate that the first frame on my timeline is a keyframe. This will help determine certain properties of the start of my video file here. Subsequent frames inside my video or image file here will have these settings as well, unless another keyframe is set up further down the timeline and different settings are applied. I will also be manipulating the weight as we go along the timeline here. If I left click on the diamond icon next to this property as well, so that this turns red, I wish for the rays to be invisible at the start of my animation file. Therefore, I'm going to reduce the weight to zero. Exposure will be manipulated as we go further along the timeline also. This can stay as one for now. If I left click on the diamond icon for this, a keyframe is set up so that this property will maintain the same value throughout subsequent frames. Just before one second passes, I wish for the rays to become visible. Therefore, I'm going to pick a point on my timeline here just before the one second mark, such as the 15 frame section. As indicated at the start of the tutorial, each second comprises of 24 frames. Therefore, if I have not gone beyond 24 frames here from the start, I'm still within the one second boundary. I'm going to go to frame number 15. 
You can also left click on the red line on the timeline, hold your mouse button down and drag this to change the position and the frame number that this points to. This will be the point where the rays start to become visible and will start turning. Since we already set up keyframes early on in the timeline, I need to ensure that certain properties underneath Inspector are manipulated to get the animation file complete. I'm going to keep center X and Y the same for now. But if I want the rays to become visible, we need to increase the weight. To ensure that the visibility of the rays changes inside the first 15 frames, we need to left click on the keyframe diamond here once more to the right of the weight value. Left click once, and I'm going to left click on the small circle which appears below the black line for weight to return to its original value of 3. To ensure that the exposure stays the same also throughout the first 15 frames, we are going to left click on the keyframe here next to the 1.0 box. Now to go to the midpoint of this particular timeline here. Since there are 120 frames on this particular timeline here inside Fusion, we need to go to frame 60. I wish for the rays to shine at the viewer from the center of this particular screen here in my video project now. Therefore, I need to left click on the diamond for the keyframe for center X and Y to change this to red and now change X back to its default value of 0.5. With Y set to 0.5 also, we can see the rays pointing directly at the viewer. I'm going to leave the weight as it is at 3, but I wish for the intensity of the rays to be greater at this particular point in my video clip here. Therefore, I'm going to left click on the keyframe diamond for exposure and change the value inside this box here to the highest I want it to be throughout the whole video clip to 1.5. Now to make the rays decrease in exposure strength and point towards the left, since the animation sequence with the rays was triggered 15 frames in to this particular video clip here, we want this particular effect to come to an end 15 frames before the end. Therefore, with 120 frames on this current timeline here, we are going to go to frame 105. Here, I want the weight reduced to zero. And the exposure back down to 1.0 also. To complete the turn effect of the rays towards the left, I need to go to the final frame, 120, and type in the opposite value, which I typed into center X for frame 0, which was minus 1.0. Here, I'm going to type in 1. And to ensure that in these last 15 frames that the weight and exposure remains the same also, I can left click in the keyframe diamonds next to these properties also. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.